Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, today I'm doing not, not another Apple, uh, yes, another Apple computer. Uh, something a bit different today. Um, I am going to change out on this um, aluminium MacBook Pro the, um, I don't even know what it's called actually, I call it a power board, but basically it's a small circuit board at the back right of this laptop. It's actually this fella here, and it's got the power connector on it, the MagSafe connector. Um, USB audio and the um, card bus adapter. Um, now, this is a common board on a lot of laptops. A lot of comp a lot of uh, Windows laptops have a very similar board to this that has power and various other connectors on it. So, um, in this instance, this MagSafe connector is completely cooked, quite literally. It's it's burnt up and stuff like that. However, this repair would also work if you've got problems with your USB or audio connectors. Um, so if they're broken or they're otherwise not working, you could have replaced this board and that will probably fix it. So this is one I've taken out of the computer that's actually broken. This is actually a donor laptop that I'm going to rob the parts from. So um, uh, I'll show you how to disassemble this one, then we'll take the board, put it in the other one and reassemble it. So uh, I'm going to start off by taking out all the screws on the laptop. So that is battery out, this cover off, two screws under here off, two screws in there, and then all the way around the sides, and these ones. So, I'm going to get on with that. I've got some missing screws on this laptop because it's a donor one. I've nicked parts from this before and I've forgotten to put some screws back in. So. Okay, so now this is just going to lift off with a little bit of uh, levering. Sometimes it gets stuck down at the front. Um, this one's come apart before, so it's coming apart very easily. If the front half won't come off, you need to get a metal prime tool or a flat screwdriver will do, and just dig it under, get right in under this plastic bit to the metal, and just pry it upwards, and the clips will just pop off. So be careful, but it does just lift straight off. It is that simple. Now, when you're lifting it up, just take care of the cable underneath the keyboard. Hopefully that should reveal it. You can lift it up pretty far, it's quite a long cable, then you've just got to ping that off like that. And now, keyboard is off. Now what we've got to do is dig out all of this mess here, which is a horrid thing to get to. We've pretty much got to take all of this out. It's not as bad as it looks, but it sort of all comes off in messy lumps, so it's a little bit weird. So uh, I'm going to start off by removing the wireless card. It's a weird mix of double O screwdrivers and some sticks in this laptop. They just, they just use whichever one they feel like it, so I'll have both of them on hand. Now, this cabling is a horrid beyond belief. Um, there's quite a few plugs here that have wires that go in different directions. This one, for example, comes up along here. It's also got some that go up in that direction. So you can't fully remove certain parts of this assembly in one go. Oh, look at that, it does go around. Just, yeah, you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, what, 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 So peel back, but don't expect to be able to take off straight away, basically. So I'm just gonna keep peeling these um, wires off. As well. All right, I'm gonna take the cooling fan out now. 
It doesn't have to come out, but it will give you a little bit more space if you do remove it. And considering it's only another three screws, it's, uh, it's worth the effort. remove this fella now. Not quite. Again, this has just got this random cable that's going down here. I think that's going to a thermal sensor or something like that. So, I'll tell you where that's going. That's going to go all the way along the back to the other speaker. Either way, I'm just going to tuck that, fold that over. See what I mean? It's, it's, it's a bit horrid. Some things just don't come out very easily on this. So, uh, I'm just going to hold that back while I carry on working. We'll take off this cable here. This is one of the main power lines into the laptop, I think. Tuck that out of the way. Ish. Right, and then that's everything that we need to disconnect. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five screws holding this down. This one you'll need either some kind of hex driver, I don't have a small one to hand, so I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers just to loosen that off, and then undo it by hand, and the rest of them are all T6s. Now this will just wriggle out. There we go, like so. And that's removed. Right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna check that this is a match. I've replaced one of these on a 17 inch before and despite looking identical, it didn't work. The model numbers need to match down to a T, otherwise it won't be compatible. These laptops are virtually identical. They're both from, they're both the same generation but you get tiny little sub-revisions in them that usually throw them off. The previous one I saw had a big model number across here somewhere, but I can't actually find it anywhere on this one. It might be under this black plastic. Either way, to be honest, based on the fact that the two, the donor laptop and the actual customer laptop have exactly the same EMC number, which is visible under the keyboard here, they're both EMC 2136, both 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 duos, rest of the specs are virtually identical. So in this instance, I'm pretty certain that this is gonna work. So, right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that there, put all this out of the way. I'll reassemble this later on off camera. Here's one I pulled apart earlier. So again, as you can see, it's pretty much the same deal here. Okay, so, while this is out, I'm just going to quickly use a toothbrush just to clean up the uh, MagSafe port. A bit of a token gesture, but these things often have various bits attached to them. There's a bit of a chunk of metal or some kind of iron filing on here that I'm just going to remove. Because they're, ver because they're strongly magnetic, you do pick up all kinds of crud in them. That's often a contributor to what damages them. The grey bit is just a bit of plastic, so if this is all completely mullered, you can just remove it and you'll just expose the bare magnet at the, behind it. This is not, you, it's perfectly safe to do that if it's completely horrid and everything, but this one's not in too bad a condition, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Just dig into the connectors a little bit there. That'll do. Okay, let's get this fitted again. Uh, actually, I'm going to give this a dust out before I do that, so I'll be back in just a moment. Given that dust out, so that's a bit tidy now. So, this is just going to uh, work its way back in. 
I'm going to go in with a slide in like that. The, the uh, MagSafe connector is the bit that gives you the trouble. Oops. If you remove the display assembly, this would be easier, but that is... No, it's not that difficult, actually. If you remove... This cable comes out, two screws there, two screws there, and this will come off. However, if I just give that a little bit of a, a jiggle, to use the technical term. There we go. That will drop straight in. All right. Let's get these screws back in. Now, all of this is kind of going to go in at the same time. So I'm just going to position this to make sure that I'm going in in the right order. Yeah, that's looking good. So, this black bit of plastic goes in first. Now, it's screwed in with other things, so I'm just going to reposition these cables in order to uh, hold it roughly in place. the cooling fans, this one's a bit cleaner. Okay, and that's it. I'm just checking for any connectors that don't have anything in them, any screw holes that are empty, anything like that. And it looks like we're all clear. So, let's put the uh, keyboard back on. see if these things work or not is to have the battery fitted so for testing what I normally do is I fit these two to the bottom which just hold everything in plug the battery in and then I will power it up just grab a char charger we've got a green light and there's an orange one. The green light just simply means it's connected so don't be fooled. An orange light where it means it's charging which is good. Now obviously the ultimate test is to actually see if it turns on. That sounds like a good start to me. We have a chime so I'll let that start up. I'll let it get into MacOS and make sure that uh, it's actually charging. Well, this battery is completely shot, however, it is showing that the power source is from the mains, and that's the desired effect. So, 
we are all done here. Now it's just a question of cleaning this up. You may consider actually trying to sell the customer the donor keyboard, which is in much nicer condition. Let's see if he's interested in that. Anyway, that's everything. Um, all I need to do now is put the screws back in the sides. The only caveat of information is, for God's sake, don't put the screw in the DVI portholes because it will go straight through and then you have to take the logic board to, out to get that out. I've made that mistake once and only once. So take super care that you go for the screw hole and not the DVI screw point. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.